Hey kindergartners, are you ready for Jack and Annie's new adventure? Chapter 4 gets suited up. Hmm, when I last left you, my question for you was, yes, do you think Jack and Annie will be able to get into the um, panda reserve or no? Hmm, I guess we'll find out now. By the sounds of it, get suited up. It sounds like they're probably going to go in. All right, as I read today, I'd like you to take out your reader response journal, open up to... Um, part four, and I want you to just draw anything you think Jack and Annie learn as they go on their adventure today. I won't give it away ahead of time. So your job is to what? Illustrate anything Jack and Annie learn today. All right. I don't believe her, Jack grumbled to himself. He had no choice but to follow Annie into the panda center. When he walked through the gate, he saw a group of low buildings with tree-covered mountains looming behind them. As Dr. Ling led the group along the stone path, Jack saw Annie talking to an elegant older woman with snow-white hair. He quickly caught up with them. He pulled on Annie's sleeve, but she kept talking to the woman. I've always loved them, Annie said. You too? My goodness, yes, the woman said. I've come all by myself from New York City to see them. That's great, said Annie. We've come all the way from Pennsylvania. What's your name? Sylvia, the woman answered. And yours? I'm Annie, and this is my brother Jack. Do you mind if we take along with you, Sylvia? said Annie. Of course not, said Sylvia. I'd be delighted. Great, said Annie, as she smiled at Jack. Dr. Ling led the group into one of the buildings and gave each person canvas coveralls, paper shoes, and rubber gloves. All volunteers must wear these over their clothes, she said. That way, we'll know you're here to help us. We're going to get caught, Jack whispered to Annie. Don't worry, she said. You actually are with an adult now. Jack shook his head, but he took off his pack, and he and Annie each pulled on large, bulky coveralls. They rolled up their sleeves and pant legs. Then they slid paper shoes over their sneakers and tugged on the rubber gloves. We'll all go into the nursery first, said the doctor. Annie grabbed Jack's arm. She looked like she might explode with happiness. Dr. Ling opened a door at the back of the room and herded everyone into the panda nursery. We have only one newborn panda cub right now. As you walk by the incubator, take a quick peek. The group paraded slowly past the incubator. Almost everyone who peeked at the baby murmured with surprise. Jack quickly found out why. The newborn didn't look like a panda at all. It looked more like a fuzzy pink mouse. Incredible, said Jack. It's so teeny, whispered Annie. Yes, Sylvia whispered back. I've read that newborn pandas weigh less than a half a pound, but they can grow into 200 and into a 250-pound bear. Whoa, whispered Jack. He and Annie walked with Sylvia out of the nursery. Now, let's go meet some of our panda keepers, said Dr. Ling. She led the group over to a stone walkway beside bamboo woods near a goldfish pond. Several men in blue coveralls were waiting for them. These gentlemen are panda keepers, said Dr. Ling. You volunteers will work in pairs in different panda houses. Each pair will spend a little time taking care of a panda. She pointed to Jack and Annie. You two go with Master Lee. He's Bing Bing's keeper. He'll take you to her house. I hope you and your grandmother, I hope your grandmother doesn't mind. Sylvia smiled. Oh, I'm not, she started to say. Bye, Grandma, Annie said with a laugh. Sylvia laughed too as if she thought Annie was making a joke and she waved goodbye. See you later, Annie called. Then she grabbed Jack by the arm again and pulled him along after Master Lee. Master Lee was quiet and very serious looking. Without a word, he led Jack and Annie to Bing Bing's house. The panda's house was a giant cage with a door that opened into a yard. The yard was surrounded by a rock wall. Bing Bing lives by herself here, Master Lee said. She's an eight-year-old adult who joined us when she was quite small. When they entered the cage, Jack saw leaves and bamboo stalks scattered across the concrete floor, but there was no panda inside. Where's Bing Bing now? said Annie. Somewhere in her yard, said Master Lee. 
He grabbed two brooms from the corner. Jack and Annie looked through the bars at the yard. They saw trees and bushes, but no sign of a giant panda. She must have found a good hiding place, said Annie. Yes, I do not think you will see her today, Master Lee said matter-of-factly. Oh, no, said Annie. Can we look for her, asked Jack. No, Bing Bing is very shy. We have to respect that, said Master Lee. I am going to get fresh bamboo now. You can clean her house by removing yesterday's uneaten bamboo stalks and sweeping the floor. He handed brooms to Jack and Annie. Is bamboo Bing Bing's favorite food, asked Jack. Yes, all pandas eat bamboo for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, said Master Lee. Wow, they must really love it, said Annie. Can humans eat bamboo too, asked Jack. If they tried, they would break their teeth. Master Lee answered without smiling. Only a creature with super strong jaws can eat bamboo. So it's very tough, said Jack, growing excited. Yes, is it as tough as wood? Well, yes, said Master Lee. And I'll bet it's really healthy too, said Annie. Uh, no, said Master Lee. Bamboo is not very nutritious. That's why a panda must eat a lot of it. Some pandas at the center eat 80 pounds a day. Oh, okay, said Annie, her shoulders sagging. And I guess it's not baked with love either, is it? Master Lee stared at Annie. He looked confused. No, uh, of course not, he said. Darn, said Annie. Jack was embarrassed. Like the waiter in the restaurant, Master Lee must think we're really weird, he thought. Well, said Master Lee, shall we get to work now? Sure, said Annie. Sweep up the stocks as well as the panda waste, said Master Lee. Then discard everything there. He pointed into a trash bin in the cage. Panda waste, said Jack. Yes, said Master Lee, seeing Jack's expression as he added, it's not bad, I promise you. Their droppings look like dry little straw baskets. Jack looked around. He saw what he thought Master Lee was talking about. It didn't look that bad. I will be back, said Master Lee. I am going to get fresh bamboo from the farmer's truck. Master Lee then left through the door at the back of the cage. Darn, said Jack. We struck out. No special food here, said Annie. She looked out in the yard. And no panda here either. I really want to see Bing Bing. How did this happen, said Jack. We should be working on our mission, not stuck in a cage picking up panda poop. Annie giggled. Don't worry, we'll leave soon, she said. Let's just do our job first. It's nice to help out here. Yes, yeah, sure, said Jack. Sweep fast. Jack and Annie began sweeping up old bamboo stalks and panda droppings. Jack filled a dustpan. As he dumped everything into the trash bin, Annie gasped. Oh, I see her, she whispered. She's up in a tree. Oh, they see Bing Bing. How exciting. And tomorrow you will learn more about Bing Bing. Well, Monday you'll learn more about Bing Bing as we read chapter five called Bing Bing. <laughs> All right. Before you go on, I want you in that tiny little box down below. Now, I know you've been illustrating this whole time, which is awesome. In that tiny box down below, I want you to write down whether you think Jack and Annie will get to touch and meet Bing Bing or will she stay in the tree? All right, I can't wait to hear your responses. I'll see you on Monday for the next part of our story, Chapter 5, Bing Bing.